one from Shiloh, Jesus, the, the Messiah, is going to come back to us one day. Ma dedication, Matthew 18, 1 to 6. This is just what I read shortly at, from the Bible. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a little child, and he said to the little child, go away. I said, he said, he called a little child, and he said, he said, and he put a little child, and he put a child, he stood amongst them, and he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children. What? The little children, the, what? The little child depends on its mother. A little child depends on, 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 on adults. A little child will depend on everything. A little child is something that will accept and have the faith. And that's what Jesus said. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child <laughs> is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And in my view, the mother will be up right up there as well. <laughs> And whoever welcomes a child like this in my name welcomes me also. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe, now this is where we, we, we get it. What does the little one believe? The little one believes in, in faith. It believes in, it, it just believes. A child just will, will believe. And as it's grown up and as it's dedicated, as Nolene, you're going to dedicate Daniel, as Brenda dedicated, Drayden, as Storm dedicated, Levi. As, it, as the child starts believing and his faith starts building up, if anyone causes any one of these who believe, uh, that's faith in me to stumble. But I want to tell you something else, that we're all little children. Each one of us, not just the child, but each one of us who believe in, in Jesus Christ as our, our personal Savior, we are children of the God of heaven. And if anybody causes either one of you to stumble as well, anybody that misleads you or takes you on the wrong path or whatever, that's not good. Faith in me to stumble, scandaliso is the, is the Greek word that was used, and it means to trip someone up or to put something in his path away from God. And if you, if you allow something to be put in his path, take him away from God, you will also be judged for it. It would be better for him to have a large millstone, that was a big, it was a weight, or put around his neck and be drowned. Well, that's, that's the Bible we preach. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be baptized? <laughs> Deuteronomy 7, 13, verse 6. We're talking about the, we're talking about the wheat, and, 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 and uh, we're going to talk about the wheat, we're going to talk about the wine, and we're going to talk about the oil. And I had a question a while ago when we were under the, the COVID lockdown, and one, we used to do questions and answers, and we would try to answer the questions. And one of the questions was in uh, Revelation chapter 6, um, verse 5, about... The, the, the weights and the scales and why the, the oil and, and why the wine wouldn't disappear. And I want to finish, I'm going to finish with that. But in the meantime, Deuteronomy 7, 13 to 15, he will bless the fruit of your womb, the crops of your land, the grain, new wine and oil. It's always the same. The grain, the new wine, the oil, the grain, the new wine, the oil, the grain, the new wine, the oil. What does it mean? Well, here we get a grain. Here, this is a grain. That that's a grain. That that all that grain. That's a grain, and that grain gives up. It gives up its identity to become something else. Because when that's mixed together, it becomes it doesn't become a grain anymore. It becomes a loaf. It becomes edible. I just want to carry on through this. This is a grain of wheat. Wheat was ground to break its soft center into flour, was mixed with water, and pounded. We're talking about the bread of life, Jesus here, and stretched and pulled and beaten, and it heated like a burnt offering. The kernel of wheat gave up its identity to become bread. Jesus, just as Jesus, he gave up his identity to become the bread of life. We must never, ever forget that. The wine... The wine that we use today is grape juice, um, mainly because uh, a lot of the churches that used to use the wine, um, it didn't work. <laughs> or maybe it did. <laughs> okay. Wine, it's a grape, it's crushed, it's trodden on, it's, it, it lies in the sun. Now I'm talking about how they did it in biblical times. And the grape gave up its identity as well. 
to become wine. Just like Jesus laid down his identity, took off his glory, he laid it to one side. Why? So that he could become mankind, so that he could come down to us. Just like Jesus put aside his heavenly garment, so to make a new covenant with his blood. And he, uh, he said, with this, with this, he says, this will, is the new covenant in me. Those of us who believe that Christ died on the cross, that was buried and that rose again, rose again. The resurrection is so important. We have got the covenant and the blood of Jesus Christ. And that covenant is something that cannot be broken by us because he says, no one can pluck you out of my hand and no one can pluck you out of the hand of the Father. The oil, let's get to the oil. The oil, the anointing oil. The fruit. When you get an olive and you go to the Mount of Olives, when you get, when you get an olive, to get the, the, uh, the oil or the fruit, uh, 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 you get the fruit, which is the outside, obviously. We've all seen olives, hello. Uh, and the seed inside, it's got to be crushed together by a great weight in the olive press, and the crushing also removes its bitterness. It removes its bitterness. Jesus was crushed in the Garden of Gethsemane. At the same manner, Jesus was crushed under the burden of the great weight of our sin. He was crushed to become the anointing oil that heals us today. How does he heal us? He heals us through our faith in him, through eternity. It doesn't mean to say everybody that's got a sniffle or everybody that's got a, a disease or a, is going to be healed because of the, of the anointing oil or because of Jesus. It means that your soul has been healed. It's been taken out of darkness and placed into light that you will live on. You will not, although you may taste death on this earth, your body will taste death. Your soul, your spirit will live on in eternity. That is the healing that the anointing of Christ. Why? Because he is the anointed one. That's the garden of Gethsemane. That olive tree in there is over a thousand years old. And, and that is the, is the garden where Jesus was pressurized. Remember he sweated like drops of blood and they came down and they just dropped down. The Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane means olive press. That's, that's what, that's what the, it means. And that's where he was. He was pressed. And he was pressed. And he was pressed for you, for me, for those who died before, for those who are going to die in the future. And I just want to finish off with something. And this is Revelation 6, verse 5, verse 6. And then I'm going to ask Jan just to close in a last song. And then we're going to go because it is very hot. <clears throat> And when he broke the third seal, now first of all, the book of Revelation is, is, is a, when we come to the chapter six, it's about the seals that are open. And uh, in chapter five, we find that, that, that John is crying because no one, John is the, rev, the, the one who was getting the revelation. He was crying because no one was found that could open the seals. But what are the seals? Well, you find that the seals are the seals are the deeds of this earth. And this is what's going to happen to this earth. And Jesus is the only one. Why? Because he is the one that's got the deeds. He is the, he's the only one that's got the ownership. He is going to be the ruler of this world. He was the only one found that was able to open it up. And when he broke the third seal, first of all, he broke the first seal. And from the first seal, out, out came a pale horse or a white horse and... and but the white horse had a bow. It didn't have a sword. So the white horse was out to conquer. It was conquering, but it wasn't conquering through a sword. It wasn't conquering through warfare. It was conquering through deception. And it's deception we've got to be aware of. And then the second seal was open, and the second seal was a red horse, and it came, and if you read the word, it says it was allowed to take, allowed. Why? Because God allowed it. It was allowed to take peace away. It didn't say it came to make war. Ah, oh, no, it came to take away the peace that you think you have. And the peace that you've got in Jesus Christ, that red horse is trying to take that away from you. Don't let it happen. You don't need to let it happen. It shouldn't happen. And then we come to the verse that I wanted to, to talk about. Um, we, the, the black horse. And I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales. Now, we know what scales are. Well, the older people know what scales are. You know, the, remember? I remember mum used to send me for potatoes, and it was a nose in the UK, it was a quarter stone or half a stone or so many pounds. 
and they'd weigh it up, they'd put weights on one side, and they'd put the, the potatoes on the other side. It was for measurement. It was for, you get them today in the kitchen, but they're much different. <laughs> he had scales in his hand. And I heard, as it were, a voice in the center of the four living creatures. Who's in the center of the four living creatures? Only the Messiah, Jesus himself. And the four living creatures, and he says, a quart of wheat for a denarius. In other words, a denarius is a day's wage. A quart of, of wheat. Wheat was a rich man's food. It was a rich man's food during the days of Jesus. That's why he was at, uh, uh, the Passover was during the barley harvest. And we had the feast of Pentecost was during the wheat harvest. He said, and I heard, as it were, a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. But he turns to that, the, the rider on the horse, and he says, do not harm the oil and the wine. Do not harm the oil and the wine. Do not harm the communion. And do not harm the anointed, those who are anointed. If we read to the end of the chapter, we see there is, who can stand? Lord, who can stand against such things? And the only people that can stand are people like you and me that have been anointed by Jesus Christ in our hearts, not just on our foreheads, but in our hearts. We have the oil and we have the wine. And because of that, we have got the victory. Now, the question you're going to ask, are we in that period of time yet? And the answer to, to, that I think is we are not. I do believe that we're building up to it, but I don't believe we're in that time. But I do believe that during that time, the tribulation period, people will still be getting saved. They will still be getting people, but there won't be as much. As you see, there won't be as much wheat. There will not be as much barley. There will not be as much harvest out there, but there still will be the communion. God bless you and thank you for listening.